Welcome to the She Force Show. I'm your host, Amy Carlson. Today, I have a special guest, Ellen Bergen. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me, Amy. Oh, it's a, my pleasure. And I know that our listeners are going to get some great inspiration today. So, Ellen, the first thing when I um, found you and was looking at your website, if it brings you joy. I love that. Can you tell me a little more about how you came about with the name? Sure. I I was um, looking for something to, I, I was just um, not feeling challenged, not feeling fulfilled in my job. So I was looking for something to kind of challenge myself and maybe have a creative outlet. And so I decided to start a blog and every domain name that I tried was already taken. And I can clearly remember the day I was driving. I know right where I was. And I came up with, if it brings you joy. And I pulled over, I checked, and it was available. So as soon as I got where I was going, I purchased it. And it just made me so excited because the word joy really resonates with me. And so that was it. If it, if it brings you joy. I love it. I love it. And that you can remember the whole thing, <laughs> you know, when... clearly like it was yesterday, but it was 2017. Yes. And so it obviously brought you joy. It did. So how did you get started with your business? Well, around the age of 50, I was in what should have felt like the perfect career, you know, the perfect position. Um, I had great pay. I had great benefits, worked with some fantastic people. But for me, the fulfillment, it, it just was gone. You know, it, it was more about me than the job. Um, so I um, started to kind of do a lot of soul searching. And I actively pursued different routes, including my blog. Um, you know, I would do some research or go exper experience something, read a book, and then I would write about it. And so it kind of very quickly moved into a personal growth type blog, whereas at the beginning, I may have talked about other things that brought me joy, like you know, home decor and things like that. So I did a lot of research. And one day I was talking with someone kind of talking about the fact that I know there's something more for me. And it's not the world of IT, which was the industry that I was in. So she said, you know, after talking with me, she said, do you ever think about being a life coach? I'm like, mm, no, no. And then I, I went home and she just kind of planted the seed. So I did some research, including um, a, looking into podcasts, because I'm kind of a podcast fanatic. And I found one about coaching, and I binged every single episode. And it was with Rhonda Britton from the Fearless, in Living, Fearless Living Institute. And she was then offering a 30-minute laser coaching. So I did that. And within one month, I was flying to LA for a long weekend intensive um, to kick off the start of her life coach training program. Cool. So you, um, Fearless Living, you did it when you joined <laughs> that within that first month. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yep. And it was a, a year long um, certification program. Um, it's quite rigorous, and it's the only one of its kind that really specializes in fear and, you know, how fear lives in our brain and part of our neuro neurobiology. That is fascinating. And because I saw that um, fearless living. And so when we read that, we might have one idea of what that means. But then when you just mentioned that it actually addresses the fear that we have in our brains, Exactly. Um, yeah. Can can you elaborate a little bit more on that and how it uh, works into your the coaching that you do? Sure. Um, well, a lot of people say, oh, I, I don't have fear. 
Um, you know, I, I just don't think that's keeping me from my confidence. And um, the, the thing about fear is, like I said, we have a fear center in our brain. So if we're human, we have some fear. It's just a matter if we are aware of how it is affecting our behavior. And fear has all kinds of little tricks that it uses to keep us from um, ste basically stepping out of our comfort zone because fear has one and only one job, and that's to keep us safe. So we can't get rid of fear altogether, nor would we want to. I mean, it keeps us uh, physically safe in addition to emotionally safe. So we don't want to be walking into traffic or we don't want to be, you know, going up to a wild animal or something like that. So our fear does keep us safe in that aspect and we need it in order to, to stay alive. What we don't need is fear keeping us from going for the life that we want. But fear hasn't um, progressed since basically caveman days. Um, and, and, and we're living in a whole different world. But yet our fear hasn't um, grown with us uh, as humanity. So it doesn't realize that what happened to us as children, or even our aunt, what happened to us, our ancestors, um, that yes, maybe things did happen that affected us as a child, yet we're grown adults and we can handle so much more today, but it still uses these tricks to keep us in our comfort zone because it needs to keep us safe. And that means it doesn't want us to feel emotionally um, uncomfortable. You know, it doesn't want us to feel disappointed. It doesn't want us to fail. It doesn't want us to, to feel any of those feelings that um, it thinks is unsafe. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So <clears throat> how do you see people's confidence grow as they work with you? Cause I'm, I'm kind of thinking, that that's one of the ways, you know, working through fears, taking some actions. And as we take actions, we build confidence. Um, I would love to hear some of the things that you see with your clients as they progress. The first thing that we generally work on is awareness. And that's awareness of how fear is affecting them and how fear is making them behave in ways that don't support their goals. And that can be a little eye opening sometimes because we tend to live on autopilot, just mm -hmm. unconsciously go through our life. And we don't realize uh, how fear is holding us back. So we work on the awareness of how it is affecting them individually. And I say individually, because truly, it affects each and every one of us very differently. Um, we all have, you know, different childhoods, different experiences in life. So it's very unique to each of us. And so once they start having this awareness of how fear is holding them back, then we work with tools that they can uh, use, you know, in their daily life to help uh, calm that fear. And, you know, after they recognize, ah, this is fear, I don't have to listen to it. And then they can use these tools to help build their confidence and really um, internally be able to validate themselves rather than looking for external, having to have external validation. Um, from other people or other things that can potentially disappear when you can really internally validate yourself. That's when your confidence can really start to shine. And yeah, and you people find that they become, um, they're, they're not as afraid to become more authentic. And they, they can quiet that often negative self talk, self doubt, all that mean stuff that that inner critic does to all of us, they start to become aware of it and go, ah, 
that's you. That's you, fear. And I have something I can do to quiet you because I don't want to live in fear. I want to live in freedom and joy. Yes. Yes. So how has your confidence grown going from a job, a career that you had been doing for years, stepping into something uh, new and different? And over time, how has that shown up for you? Well, it's it's been a journey for sure. Um, just like my 30 year career in, in the business world was a journey. Sure. When I, when I left, I was very confident in the work that I did. So this was starting over. Um, it, I, I was used to teaching people in various positions that I had throughout the years, but confidence is or coaching is different than teaching. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's more, helping the person have their own insights. Um, if, if I tell you something, it's not going to have as much impact as if you come up with it on your own. So that was very different. But the coaching train, the training program that I went to was excellent at helping me with that. My mentor was really good. And so when it, after I graduated, I, I had hired a business coach and honestly, it didn't work out. And here's what I found, Amy, is that I was trying to be what I thought a coach should be. You see it all over the internet. Be a six-figure coach, be a seven-figure coach. You know, and, and so I thought that that's what I was supposed to want. Yet I was in my 50s and my husband had been retired for several years and I really was, the, this sounds like it could be a little corny, but I really just wanted to serve. I, I um, considered my, my career kind of at a close and we were comfortable with our lifestyle. And so this coaching chapter was for me. And um, so I could kind of um, grow my soul and do something that I loved um, and, and so, yeah, I, I certainly didn't have the confidence at the beginning, especially when people were telling me what I should want. Yeah. But once I really worked my way through there and figured out what is it that I really want, yeah. and then I zoomed in and I, I, I couldn't be all things to all people. And I really embrace the fact that the people who will want to be a client of mine and who will benefit from my coaching are going to either like me or not. And if they don't, then they're not, we're, we're just not the right fit for each other. And there's plenty of other coaches out there that will be, be a good fit for them. So I stopped worrying about what. I was supposed to be doing and just started doing what I authentically wanted to do. And um, yeah, and I did my thing and I just take so much joy in working with each individual client. And that's another thing. A lot of times people will try to say, oh, you should do group coaching. You know, that's where the money's at. I'm like, well, my style, I'm more of an introvert. So my style of coaching is one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I enjoy. Yeah. And so I really accepted that I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's what I do. If people want group coaching, then, then there's another group for waiting for them. Yeah. So yeah, kind of, I really had to feel my way through it. And once I really figured out what worked for me, for my life, then that's when the confidence really started to grow. And as I see my clients having success, that's, that, that's what I'm doing, what I'm doing. Yes. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yes. That's your why. Yes. So you started um, living what, what you're, website is called if it brings you joy and i can relate the whole um 
having been in a different career and then coming into this online space and then going through some self-doubt, you know, like, uh, and then listening more than I needed to probably to what other people were saying. And um, then what you landed on is what brought you joy. Absolutely. It looks like this. It's one-on-one coaching for me. Here's, here's, here's what my own goals are. And they, may be completely different than everything else I'm hearing outside of me. Right. And, and it didn't come just, you know, like a, a you know, flip of a switch yeah. and it didn't come overnight. And I did have to take action that did not feel comfortable. It was definitely out of my comfort zone to do a lot of the things. And for instance, you and I met on Instagram And that was definitely creating videos was not in my comfort zone. But now I find it as a a really creative outlet that that I enjoy. Um, But I had to take the first step and just create a video and put it out there. And then um, the more I did that, eventually it became part of my comfort zone. So just like anything, that's just one example, but I definitely took a lot of steps out of my comfort zone to get to where I am today. Yeah. Yeah. And you just mentioned the word creativity, creating videos, uh, taps into your creativity. Have you noticed any other things about what you're doing now, whether it's in your business or maybe kind of as a byproduct of, of coaching that has enhanced or really um, plugged into your own creativity? Mm, That's a really good idea. I mean, (laughs) that's a really good question. Um, You know, all the different social platforms are definitely fun. Um, And when I put my own touch on my coaching packages that I offer, that I think is really creative too. And I incorporate feedback from my clients. And so I'm always improving. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be creative. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And because I enjoy it. And it's, um, yeah, it's just something I enjoy. And I do have a blog. I don't write as often as I used to, but I love writing. And that's a creative outlet for me as well. Yeah, for sure. Yes. So what's next for you? Do you have anything on the horizon, whether it's a a distant horizon or kind of a sooner thing that uh, you're working on or thinking about? Well, I'll just back up for a moment. When I started my blog, I always knew my blog was taking me down a path that that wasn't the the end all, that it was taking me to what I knew I wanted something more in my life. So it took me to life coaching. So I'm very grateful for that. And do I think life coaching is the end? You know, I'm not sure. I am just enjoying the process of um, going from the blog to coaching, to improving my coaching and enjoying every moment that I coach. So I am open to where the universe wants me to go. And right now I'm very satisfied with coaching. I do um, have a different um, work life balance from most people because I do like to spend time with my husband as we are retired. Um, So I do keep my practice a little smaller than probably most coaches. And um, so, yeah, I just really right now I am just enjoying coaching and I um, am open to where I might go. And things that interest me are things that just kind of help um, advance my soul. You know, maybe maybe Reiki is in my future. There's all sorts of things that I'm not ruling out. I'm just going to enjoy the process of having it all revealed to me in the perfect time. And I like what you just said. Advance my soul. What will advance my soul? Yes. So. Yes. Yeah. That's that's really something that's top priority for me these days. Is um, I'm I'm really becoming. I'm, I'm more spiritual than I have ever been in my whole life. Um, not so much religious. Very spiritual. So 
just that um, finding that oneness with, with God and really everybody and just learning more and more um, how we're all connected and how I can help the world and, you know, send my light, let, let my light shine out there. Yes. Be the lighthouse. Yes. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything that you would like to, um, you know, send the audience off with a thought or a tip or anything? Sure. This is a saying that has helped me. I learned it in my, my time at my, um, at the Fearless Living Institute, uh, the training program. And it's do what you can, when you can, the best you can. Because personal growth, inner work, it is a lot of taking a look at yourself and having to be real honest with yourself. And so that takes a lot of self-compassion so you don't get overwhelmed. And so you don't start beating yourself up and letting that inner critic take over even more. So th that saying reminds me that, hey, I'm human and I'm doing the best I can. And, you know, let's have some self-compassion and, and continue on. Because if I'm going to beat myself up, I'm not going to be willing to continue taking those steps outside of my comfort zone. Right, right. Oh, yes. And that saying that you just said, it, it gives a sense of relief. Yeah. It does. It's, it's somewhat liberating it um, because you just give yourself permission to be human. Yeah. Yes. Well, on that note, Ellen, thank you so much for being here and sharing your journey and sharing the insights that you've had and, um, yeah, just being the lighthouse that you are. And to our audience, just remembering that information without integration gets to be a heavy burden. So what can you integrate today? What's something that you learned that you can take away and start to integrate for your own personal transformation? So thanks again, Ellen. Thank you so much. I, again, I really appreciate you having me, Amy. It was a delight. All right. Yay. Oh, so fun to visit with you, Ellen. Love your journey. Thank you. Yeah, it was it, it really I did enjoy having a conversation with you. And um, yeah, did it did it go as you had? Yeah. Uh, OK, it was, it was wonderful. And like uh, 20 minutes goes by so fast. I'm just amazed. Um, and I really appreciate, too, that you, I love the topic of fear, and I appreciate also that you brought up that um, feeling of, you know, wait a minute, I'm hearing that this, especially in the coaching world, like if, if any, any people watching that are at, at all involved in the coaching world, you know, over and over you hear, it's this, it's this, it's this, you want this, you want to model this, it's and again, how liberating to take a look, take a step back and say, actually, I want this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. What, what works for you is fantastic. Yeah. What works for me is what works for me. The, the other thing, too, is like they're like funnels, you know, all this. Ah, uh, you know, that's I I'm kind of out if I really wanted to have a full-time coaching practice, of course I would need to do more than I'm currently doing. But right now between word of mouth and me saying universe, I am ready for another client who I would enjoy and work. I would enjoy working with and who would benefit from my coaching. Mm. And then I just wait. And it's like, how is the universe going to bring her to me this time? You know what I mean? And, and so it's just fun to kind of, okay, I know it's coming. There will be the right time. Yeah. And no sense of desperation or feeling of lack or any of that. Just right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I sure look forward to um, just keeping in touch too. And um can you just tell me a real quick more, uh, just a little bit more about what you do? Yes. Yes. So I do. Um, it's 
mostly been midlife women, but a lot of them have been actually lately uh, retired um, women. And, you know, I was using the word mindset coach and um, I'm starting to move away from that a little bit. Um, And yeah, I, it's just always evolving about like what kind of title I'm using. But um, so I do uh, group work with people who are ready to, most of them have just gone through something that's kind of, you know, it's a move or a career change or their kids have left home or whatever. Um, and they feel a little spaciousness to engage in something more personal, uh, more self-related And so while I do mindset work and it's usually kind of around health, a lot of it around health, and I'm just getting back into, I was a yoga teacher for years and had a yoga studio and, and now I'm going to incorporate that too, because it just feels right. It feels like it's now's the time and, um, I don't have to rent a studio. And so do you feel like the coaching and yoga are going to overlap? Yeah. Yeah, I do. And what I, what I found before I ever got into coaching is when I would teach movement classes, uh, the words would flow from me and I didn't know it at the time, but it was mindset stuff. And, you know, and so it's kind of a soft way. What I've found is there are a lot of people that are kind of like, Ooh, mindset, you know, it's like, it it feels a little heavy. And um, so getting, coming at it from another angle, like, oh, let, you know, let's just move together and breathe. And as we breathe, and I'm, I'll mention this or that. And, and then as the body's moving, then like new ideas can kind of drop in in a different way. And so it just, it feels like it's a little um, gentler way than how I've done it in the past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know for a while I was doing yoga and then I would get kind of um, annoyed <laughs> when my husband would be making noise. And I can't, it's not like he was, you know, hammering outside the door or something, just yeah. walking around. So, you know, I can't tell him to, you know, stop walking around your house. <laughs> but yeah. I would get really annoyed when there was any noise because I just wanted to like go into my own little world and not have to be. So, yeah, that might be something I want to explore again. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Always, always little shifts. I I love that too. I just love, I feel like it really, um, you know, coaching with people is just, is the perfect thing I find. And I feel like this is how you are too, that um, it's, you always want to, I like to learn anyway. And so, and then I love to share and then, uh, you know, as you're visiting with other people, it brings other perspectives. And so the, it's just like this um, constant, you know, flow. Um, mm-hmm. And it just feels so good to be like, there's this expansion going on. And um, co-creating that with other people is so fun. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. In supporting, supporting, collaborating, all that kind of thing. It makes it a whole lot more fun. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Well, wow. I don't want to keep you because I know I know you got more going on, and um, we'll just do our quick little little um, ending kind of video, okay. and um, then I'll get all of this out to you as I know for sure, like when the date's going to be, and I'll, anything promotional, sure. send your way. So sounds wonderful. All right. Hey, it's Amy here with the She Force Show, and Ellen and I just got done with a fantastic interview, and you're going to want to watch it. Ellen, do you want to share a little bit about what we talked on? Sure. We actually covered a lot of topics, and we talked a little bit about fear and how it makes us behave and how we can become aware of that and then build our confidence, and as well as giving ourselves a little self-compassion as we do inner work, because it, it is, uh, it is work. They call it inner work because that's what it is. Yeah. So you'll want to watch. Thanks, Ellen. Thank you, Amy. Uh, 
Well, again, I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything you're doing. And please let me know anytime if there's any way that I can support what you got going on. Um, if there's any collaborations you want to do or anything you want me to share with my audience, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. You know, it might be fun to do an Instagram live together sometime. Yes. Um, yeah. Around uh, Valentine's Day, I did a... Um, a self love series. And so I, I had, uh, I only had one, I think, um, collaborator on, but that was a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, maybe I could interview you on an Instagram live. That would be great. Yeah. So yeah, I have an Instagram live in, in like an hour or something too. So. Okay. <laughs> else's. Yeah. So, so, so much fun, right? Yes. And then I'll, I'll be sending you um, an email too. And I'll just ask you if you want to, if you have a headshot that you want to share for the the thumbnail for um, the podcast and, okay. you know, anything that you want us to put below the description on the podcast as well about, about you and what you offer. So. Okay. I'll send that over an email. Okay. Thank you okay. so much, Ellen. Yeah. Ellen, thank you. I really okay. enjoyed meeting you in person. I know you said you're Montana. It's too bad we're not a little closer. I think that we could have, we could, we could go out for coffee and have a really good discussion. <laughs> totally. Well, anytime, if you get this direction or if I get that direction, we will be sure and, and um, connect. Wonderful. You have a good day. Okay. Thanks, Ellen. Bye. Bye.